got to, I've got to try the drive. <laughs> I've got to. I saw the only other day and he said he had five lines. Put a little more dubbing. Put a bit of a tighter on the end of it if you want. Well, I think the cantankerous back of the old guys are pushing the challenge now. That all started not so much as a mess. That all started with a wee creek hopper. Yeah. And the wee creek hopper is a little, really simple little grasshopper fly, but it's tied with a single point of attachment. The size of the hook is irrelevant to the fly. You can tie a size 12 fly on a size 18 hook if you want to, or you can tie a size 12 fly on a size 2O hook. Because all the materials are tied in at the same place and in an area that's, you know, only three or four millimetres of shred wraps, um, the hook is completely irrelevant to the fly. Unlike most flies where the hook is the chassis, here the hook is nothing more than the bit that you tie your leader to and you hook the fish with, you know, and the fly is just a hitchhiker. That single point of attachment led on to the messy done again using that single point of attachment to attach the body to the hook and then using the wraps that hold the body in place as a parachute post. But very quickly we'll do a little messy parachute. Um, this fly works extremely well and, and again like both of them really easy and, and quick to tie. So we basically just tie on a piece of poly yarn that's going to become our parachute post. Now the easiest way to stand it up is just hold it up, pass the thread around the front and then down through the butts. We don't need to put a hundred wraps on to hold that in place. Then for the tail this time just, you know, you could use hackle fibres or any number of other things. I've just got a few moose or elk hair fibers here that'll do the trick. Tie them on so they're against the butts of the, the wing. Put a wrap underneath just to help block it in place. There are little blocking wraps and stop the material from spreading too much. Just a little bit of super fine dubbing. I think this is a size 16 hook. So we don't need a lot of dubbing. Just tease little bits out. The biggest mistake with dubbing is people try to put too much on in one go. And it goes pear shaped. Right. A nice little taper on our body there. Just put a little bit more dubbing on. It was a bit short then. Now this is our CDC hackle or the Henry's fork hackle. Just comes in a string like that. Right. Like that. And you can see that it's really long and and everything, but don't be too too concerned about that. Just tie it on here at the front. And then just put a couple of wraps around the post. I'll put one more. And notice I just tilted the hook a bit so I can see what's going on from underneath to make it a little bit easier to tie the materials off. Pull that out of the way. The beauty of the soft materials is you can bend it and do what you like with it, it's not going to damage it. Snip that. So that's our hang there, we just get our wing. We want our wing to be about be that long and that's our finished little fly but just say so if you look from the top or you look from underneath the legs are a lot longer than tradition says they should be but it just looks buggy and it looks really buggy on the water and the fish I've had absolutely no issues with fish taking flies that look like that you know um, no issues whatsoever they just they just eat them that's it. 
Although I think you should fish this fly with, you know, I don't say brand name, but frog's fanny. And, and brush the, the, use the brush in the container to brush the top of it and to brush the, um, the post and the CDC when it's wet. Don't care if the body hangs in the water a little bit, but brush the top of it and keep that really dry. Works. So <coughs> that's what, and then I gave some of those flies to Philip Weigel. And he said to me, they look like quite a mess on the water. And that's where the name came from, messy. And they do look messy. I reckon they look really neat. But in the eyes of a lot of traditionalists, because the hackle is not one and a half to two times the gape of the hook, they're wrong. The hackle's far too long. Um, so everywhere I started using the, the Henry's fork hackle, the CDC string that you buy, Everywhere I started using that became, they became messy flies because they don't follow the normal traditions. With uh, the little messy parachutes that I was using the other day, that was a size 16 parachute that uses the same size hackle as a size 12. Yeah. And that one little fly I used in Montana when blue winged olives were hatching, I used it on the river the other day when the crane flies were hatching. And then the next day when midges and caddises were on the water and all the fish came up and ate it. Yeah. And I don't care if the hackle looks long. The fish eat it. It just looks buggy. It's not neat. And if you look at the legs on a mayfly, they aren't the same length as the body. You know, the tails of a mayfly aren't the same length as the body. Yet our traditions say that the tail of our dry fly should be the same length as a hook shank. Why? Where's that come from? You know, look in nature. The tails of a mayfly, particularly the spinners, might be three or four times the length of the body. So what are we trying to imitate when they're flies? Are we trying to imitate nature? Or are we trying to tie flies to satisfy people that died 100 years ago?